Hello my friends, my name is Paul, and here is yet again another long overdue review that I should have done eons ago. But perhaps the reason why I waited so long is because you're probably not going to like how I open this. I'm reviewing Ocarina of Time 3D for the 3DS, and I have to say, if there's one thing this remake accomplishes really well, it's to make a game that really hasn't aged well look and control better. Yeah, I know. The highest praised game of all time starts out with this. Well, let's be brutally honest. Ocarina of Time had problems, and even though at the time it was considered super revolutionary, you know, the lock-on system was perhaps the greatest thing that ever happened to gaming, you know, Zelda dungeons, you could actually look around and find solutions on the walls and on the ceilings. You had an overworld for, at the time, was considered huge. And, yeah, it was considered the pioneer of adventure gaming. But, it's the pioneer. That doesn't mean it's perfection. And you know me, I'm the type of guy that likes games that take what worked, perfect what can be perfected, and take out what didn't work. And since Ocarina of Time was the foundation, let's look at what didn't work. And that is, Ocarina of Time is a drag in its story. I'm sorry, guys, but back in the day, I wasn't as much of a story buff as I am now. This was way before Ace Attorney and Zero Time Dilemma came along. All I wanted to do was just skip through all that dialogue. And Yes, I admit Zero Time Dilemma has more writing than pretty much every Zelda game put together, but at least the characters interacted with each other, and at least it was, you know, something interesting. Link is a silent protagonist, and if I had to compare it to anything, it would be like if those of you that went to college or high school ever had to listen to a professor lecture on and on and on. That's how this game feels. And thankfully the 3DS version sped up the text, but it didn't speed up those cinematics. So, good luck. And the game even gives you options to say, like, do you want to hear this? You can say, no. And the characters say, well, too bad. You gotta listen anyway. And it's like, why even give you that option in the first place? Also, even though it eventually came to grow on me, especially when Sheik started showing up, the dialogue is kind of corny and childish by Zelda standards. I mean, yeah, maybe Skyward Sword was a bit too American-ish, but Ocarina of Time wasn't American enough, in my opinion. Some of the writing just seemed so, like, forced. Like, for instance, when you're trying to rescue the prisoners late in the game, they, they always repeat the exact same lines. I mean, do they have synchronized brains or something? Are they able to jump, like, Sigma and Virtue's Astro Ward? <laughs> Anyway, flaws aside, Ocarina of Time still is a phenomenal game, especially on the 3DS. Like, it almost makes me want to vomit when I see how far the 3DS is able to push the graphics, the controls, like, pretty much everything. So, let me get this out of the way. Unlike Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, Ocarina of Time had a complete graphical makeover with the 3DS remake. Um, I really love the new character designs, especially Link and Zelda. They just look much more better proportioned, and, and they were already pretty well proportioned, but I have to admit that Link, you know, he, he looked too much like a hamster trying to stand on its hind legs in the original, and now he actually stands up straight and he doesn't breathe as jerkily as he did before. Now, some of the side characters have just minor differences, and that kind of irked me, because I never was a huge fan of Ocarina of Time's characters, but oh well, minor gripe. Anyway, the, the game controls so much better on the 3DS. The bottom screen allows for the upper screen to remain relatively uncluttered, therefore letting you appreciate the game's gorgeous environments even more. I mean, it's not a groundbreaking 3DS title in terms of its graphics, but it still looks really good, especially when you consider that this is a repainting of, like, a, a really old Nintendo 64 game. You know, you've got individual plants growing out of the grass. The indoor environments in particular are quite stunning, making the 
houses in Ocarina of Time for the N64 look like dungeons in comparison. Again, the, the touch screen allows for a lot, allowing you to swap out items much quicker than before, providing like two map systems in addition to the on-screen map, and allowing you to have four item slots instead of just three, plus giving the Ocarina of Time a permanent slot, so you can essentially have five items at it once. That's like super convenient. Other than that, the game doesn't make too many strides to change what has worked, because like I said, Ocarina of Time is the highest rated game of all time. Nintendo probably didn't want to mess with it too much, but they made enough changes to make it accessible to newcomers and yet give enough incentive for those of us that grew up on the original and didn't think it was possible to have a remake to love. So first off, Ocarina of Time 3D has the Sheikah Stones, which were much controversy when the game first came out because it was like, oh great, Nintendo's cashing in on its Super Guide gimmick again. But if you think about it, people who didn't play Ocarina of Time might have found some of its sequences particularly challenging, especially that Water Temple, which is unanimously considered probably one of the most annoying Zelda dungeons of all time. Thankfully, the 3DS version beautifully addressed this, possibly more than any other part of the game. Um, I don't want to entirely spoil it for you, but let's just say that one of the biggest things that they did to speed up the Water Temple was making the Iron Boots into an item rather than an equipment item, which, why they didn't include it in the original game, I don't know, but Aiji Onoma, however you pronounce his name, said in an interview in 2008, I believe, that if there was one thing he could take back in Ocarina of Time, it's making the Iron Boots an equipment item. Well, guess what? You finally did it. Another thing that Ocarina of Time 3D adds is the addition of a boss battle trial mode. Now, admittedly, it is a little bit confusing on how you figure out how to get there, because you essentially don't find out about it until you've beaten three dungeons. And even then, if you're a seasoned Ocarina of Time player, you'll likely skip over the dialogue where Sheik tells you, go back to your childhood bed to relive some of your dreams. But still, as one who often likes to speed run through the boss battles because I know their patterns too well, it's a pretty cool addition. Admittedly, I haven't tried it out because, as far as I know, there's no in-game reward for it, but... Nice addition nonetheless, despite the fact that the game doesn't have leaderboards to show off your best time to the world. Um, that's about it in terms of fresh content. Um, regarding the game itself, the combat is remarkably good for its time, although admittedly, some of the battles involve just simple backflip, jump attack, good to go. The enemies are very easy to predict, and... Oftentimes, button mashing can get you through several encounters. Um, the item usage is really good here, with the 3DS's gyroscope really making it much more fun to aim your projectile weapons. And there are a few really creative items, too, like the Lens of Truth, which allows you to see invisible things in the environment. Some of the later dungeons have a lot of fun with this. On the other hand, Ocarina of Time has a few filler items that... I'm questioning why the game developers couldn't have found a better use for them. Like, for instance, you can catch bugs in a bottle, and the only literal purpose they have in the game is you can put them inside a patch of dirt and get, like, a gold, skull, gold skulltula, however you pronounce it. But the thing is, once you've planted a magic bean in the dirt, then you can't get the gold skulltula. What?! Oh, and you can ride a horse, which was amazing at the time. Except the horse is actually optional. So, while I'm pretty sure everyone knows that you can ride a horse in that game, especially because the cover of the game has Link holding up his sword while riding on the horse, it's still a shame that they didn't make it a necessity like, you know, Twilight Princess did. But again, it's a remake of an old game. I can forgive them for a couple of things. One thing I can't forgive them for is the lackluster saving system. Because, mind you, this is a portable game. And a lot of people, when they're playing portable games, they only like to play for short stretches of time. 
And so to be forced to go all the way back to either Link's house if you're a kid, the Temple of Time years later, or the beginning of a dungeon is pretty darn annoying. And there is an in-game item that lets you save which room you're in. You have to go back to the beginning of the room once you warp back to that point. And it kind of stinks that you have to have an item just to do that. And it costs magic. You know, this was back in the days when you actually had a magic meter. Not the energy gauge that A Link Between Worlds had. So, don't know what Nintendo was thinking there, too. Also, I'm really glad that the ESRB changed this game to an E10 rating. Because, let's be honest, that Great Fairy creeps me out to this day. Always kind of did. And... Uh, and then there's Princess Rudo, which admittedly is a little less disturbing in this version, but still, those proportions. And the game has a surprising amount of blood. Like, I mean, for a game that was rated E back in the day, you know, Ganondorf spit out blood after you fight him, and most of the enemies do bleed and actually fall to pieces after you've finished beating them. I mean, that's kind of gruesome for a game supposed to be marketed for kids. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm bad-mouthing the game way too much. So you're probably wondering what's good about it. Well, it's good because it established the formula that made Twilight Princess. And if you didn't like the original game, you'll be glad to know that there's a brand new fully orchestrated credit sequence that awaits you after you beat the game, which was done by the same guy that did Mario Galaxy, so the orchestra lover in me was pretty giddy at that. And you get a harder version of Ocarina of Time Master Quest, which was originally released on the GameCube. And since that game is pretty hard to find nowadays, it's really cool that you have it in this format, because it looks prettier, is harder, because you take more damage from the enemies, and the whole world is mirrored. So if you're the type of person that preferred to link right-handed, like he was in the <coughs> Wii version of Twilight Princess, you're good to go there. And to talk about Ocarina of Time Master Quest briefly, it's essentially the same game, but the dungeons are rearranged. They have the same basic layout, but some of the elements have been repositioned to make the dungeon overall a bit more challenging. Well, most of the dungeons. The Water Temple is now stupid easy, to the point where it's almost laughable how easy it now is. And... Some of the solutions to the puzzles, while creative, are a little bit on the weird side, shall we say. Remember in my Wind Waker HD review, I talked about the weirdness factor? That was one of the biggest problems with that game's dungeons. Well, seeing that Master Quest came out like a few months before Wind Waker did in the US, I can see where they got the inspiration from. Shooting cows? As a switch? What? Thankfully, instances like that are pretty few and far between, so you shouldn't have to be cringing as much as I do. But maybe I'm just the type of guy that doesn't like weird stuff in my games. So, overall, Ocarina of Time 3D is a solid buy. Even if you haven't played the original N64 version, you should get it for the Master Quest alone. I mean, it'll give you an, a tougher time, and it'll really help you appreciate the mastering the skills you've learned in Ocarina of Time. Plus, it has one of the best soundtracks of the Nintendo 64 era, despite the fact that they took out the Islamic chanting in the Fire Temple, but still, it's still a, a masterful soundtrack. And the animation is much smoother, some of the sound effects have been modified, making it easier on the ears, and just overall it's a better playable experience. So, pick it up even if you have played Ocarina of Time before. Anyway, hope I wasn't too negative on that game. I guess after hyping up Twilight Princess a bit, I sort of felt let down, but oh well, what the heck. So, thank you for listening to me ramble. If there's any other video game that I should tackle, let me know. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye.